We're going to add two teaspoons of cumin. Move the cumin around a little bit in that hot oil before you add anything else. So you want to brown up the onions really good because it all happens here in the fry pan. Very earthy, very healthy, right? Low budget, high value. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to show you how to make lentils and rice. We're having uh, lamb tonight and usually when we have lamb we like to have some hummus, we like to have some sort of greens or something like that and we usually make lentils and rice. And if you've never tried it before, it's a, it's a good way to add something to your rice to make it even more nutritious, add in the lentils, add some protein, some other stuff there. So uh, I'm going to show you a really simple recipe for doing that. Um, and it just allows you to stretch your rice out a little bit further, further and just broaden the, uh, the dietary options. So uh, ingredients are really simple. You need some rice, you need a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cumin, half a cup of dry lentils, and about a cup of dry rice. Uh, earlier, before I turned the camera on, I put half a cup of the dry lentils in a, in a little uh, soft pot with uh, almost two cups of water. Brought it to a boil and you let that simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, so you cook the lentils prior to uh, beginning the dish. Now I'm just going to fry up some onions. I got the uh, pan here heating up. Near medium heat. I'm going to take one onion, good size onion. You can use two onions, uh, but if you're going to use one onion, you want it to have one that's you know, at least the size of a uh, baseball, that sort of thing. At least the size of a baseball, no bigger than the size of a softball, I guess would be a good way of looking at it. All right, so you just cut that up uh, nice and fine. The finer you cut it, the less time it's going to take to, uh, to fry it up. What we're going to do is we're going to fry the onion with uh, the cumin. And to get your um, rice and lentils tasting really good, you want the onion to brown in the, in the saucepan. All right, not a big deal cutting up an onion. Okay, that's all ready. Let's go over to the uh, pan and get this going. All right, so here in the pan, I got about a tablespoon of uh, uh, vegetable oil and like a good teaspoon of, uh, I'm using dairy-free butter, but you use the real thing. Uh, to that, once it gets nice and hot like that, you want to cut it down to medium heat. We're going to add two teaspoons of cumin. And our, that doesn't hurt to uh, move the cumin around a little bit in that hot oil before you add anything else. Just give it a couple seconds. Just gets the flavor of the cumin in there. Right, now we can add our onion. All right. Cumin has such an intense flavor, I love it. I'm not going to add the salt yet because I don't want to draw the moisture out of the uh, onions. So fry better if you fry them without adding the salt. Add the salt and it starts pulling the moisture out of the onions and instead of frying them you're kind of boiling and steaming them. Okay, so now I can turn the heat back up a bit. And now for the next five, ten minutes, I just gotta move this around every once in a while and just keep doing that till we uh, till we see some browning. So I'll bring you back, I mean, you know, a couple, we'll check in a couple times here, but I'm not gonna just film ten minutes of this because it's gonna take a bit of time. You can speed up how long it takes for these to brown by just putting a lid like this. You don't wanna, you don't wanna cover it because then it'll steam. So if you have a lid that's kind of flat, that won't properly cover the area, it'll keep some of that heat. And so it won't steam, but it will accelerate uh, the amount of time it takes to heat the onions up and brown them. So I'm gonna do that. It's just a lid from a different pot. It's always good to have, it's always good to have lids that don't fit for certain things. Just showing you the progress here. I haven't got my proper sound equipment hooked up. So sorry for the lousy audio, um, but uh, yeah, so we're getting getting kind of browned in there now, right? I turn the temperature down to about medium, keep it too hot and it'll burn. But you want to brown up the onions really good because it really does 
the difference between good lentils and rice and just really average lentils and rice is all happens here in the fry pan with the browning of the onions. You're just creating flavor compounds that make a huge difference in the experience of, of eating the dish. And I give it a couple more minutes, it's almost ready. All right, I'd say that's browned enough. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more uh, this butter just to get, in, get some more frying action. Now I'm gonna add the lentils. Now some people add these dry. I always cook them first. I'm always afraid they're not gonna cook properly with the rice. So you would you want, I am losing a little bit of flavor by boiling them and dumping the water out. Uh, lentils have a, a fantastic flavor all their own. But uh, anyway, this should work. Now it doesn't hurt to brown the lentils a little bit too. So we're just gonna, let's go for a second while I get the rice ready. Okay, so to add to this, I'm going to, I normally add a cup of rice, but I don't know if this, I don't normally use a different pan to make lentils and rice. This is a new pan, I really like it, so I'm using it all the time. I'm not, I'm afraid it doesn't have the volume for a cup of rice. So I'm adding three quarters of a cup of rice and one and a half cups of water to this. And I think that should be able to warehouse the rice. I hope I don't learn the hard way that the pan's not big enough. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Put a level teaspoon of salt, right, for flavor. Flavor enhancement. I think we've got enough room here in this pan for this. So that's half a cup of lentils cooked, which makes more than a cup of lentils. And uh, uh, three quarters of a cup of rice. But, or you could just use a whole cup of rice. And whole cup of rice and two cups of water, or as I've done here, three quarters of a cup of rice and a cup of half of water, cup and a half of water, and uh, a teaspoon of salt. Now what I want to do is bring this to a boil, and then once it comes to a boil, we're going to reduce to a simmer about one quarter heat, or one third heat, uh, for about 12 minutes, then you turn it off. So uh, yeah, let's get this to a boil first, then I'll show you the next step. You don't want to walk away from this at this stage, because it'll boil right over. <laughs> you gotta keep an eye on it and just, you know, keep your eyes and ears peeled for signs of boiling. So I'll, I'll be back in a couple seconds here when this starts to boil. Okay, so now we're at a good boil. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the heat down. My dial goes from one to nine, so I'm gonna turn it down to about three. I find for my stove, that's about the right temperature for cooking rice. Okay. I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm sure people are gonna talk about their pressure cooker and their one pot and their slow cooker and all this sort of stuff. I don't clutter my kitchen and all that sort of stuff. Uh, just using a pan is fine. <laughs> a pan and a lid will work fine. If you got some other gadget, use that. So I like to stir it around a little bit just to release some of that heat so it doesn't boil over. Okay, now I'm gonna put the lid back on and uh, we'll leave that for about 12 minutes. Okay, so we'll see you in 12, after 12 minutes, you take, turn the heat off and just leave it. Okay, but I'll show you where we're at after 12 minutes. Okay, so it's been 12 minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat off, but then like, so I never serve it at this stage. I usually leave it on the burner even though the burner is off. And I usually let it set another 10 minutes just to make sure all the rice is fully cooked and all the flavors have intermingled properly together. So I'm not even gonna take the lid off, right? I'm gonna keep all that heat and all that moisture and everything right in there. Also, I forgot to mention when you're doing this, whatever pot you use, make sure you get a really nice tight fitting lid. You can see there's steam escaping here, right? Um, but it's a, it's a pretty snug fit. Right? If the lid's too loose, then you'll lose too much of the water and the rice won't be properly cooked. But it looks like we've got the right texture here. Uh, we'll, we'll try this out in about 10 minutes, okay? All right, so I think enough time's gone by. I think we can try this out. Uh, normally when I open this up, I like to just fluff it up a little bit with a fork. Looks like it's turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna put a little bit in a bowl here to cool down so I can try it. It's pretty hot. Yeah, I'll bring you up to the camera here so you can see what it looks like up close. 
Right, so it's just this nice sort of brown look. <laughs> very earthy, very healthy, right? Low budget, high value <laughs> rice dish, lentils and rice. All right, so let's give her a try. Now, this is something we have, I don't know, uh, a couple times a month. Hmm. And so it's nicely browned onions and the fried cumin. Really simple flavors and just the right amount of salt. This is perfectly cooked. Um, important to rinse the rice before you add it to the mix. And just in case you want to know what kind of lentils I'm using, these are whole brown lentils. It says Masur Sabut. I don't know what that means. You know, those are the ones I'm using. All right. I don't know what, you know, what the options are, if there's other types of lentils this works with. This is what I've always used. When I've gotten in restaurants, this looks like the kind of lentils they have, a brown lentil. So lentils and rice, easy to make, inexpensive, healthy, a great way to add variety to your diet. I hope, this, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and until next time, have fun in your garden, have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing, and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.